Hi again, welcome back. This is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. This is our third and final video in this series. We are learning how to build a web page using layout grids. And in the last two videos, we got this far. We made a bunch of stuff. And now we're going to finish it up by adding to the bottom of our page here a couple more grids so we can finish off this particular web page. By the way, this page is a template that's available to you if you're a 90 Second Website Builder member. You can download this template in the members area and play with it and follow along in the video if you want to. But first let's finish it up and what we're going to do is we're going to add another grid here. You'll remember that it's pretty easy to do. We grab our layout grid tool, draw a box. This grid needs to be one column so we're going to remove that one and click OK. In this grid I want to do something a little more fun. We're going to add some text but we're also going to add a photo gallery. Photo galleries are fun to work with and I want to show you how they look in a layout grid. So this grid is going to contain basically three objects, two pieces of text and a photo gallery. So we have to put them in that order. Remember, that's how layout grids work. When we put objects in, they stack on top of each other. So I already have these objects ready to go just to save time. So I want this one to go in first, kind of a headline, and then another piece of text. Just drag it in anywhere and it stacks on top. And then I want to put in my photo gallery. Now I'm not going to spend video time making a photo gallery here because there's videos about that. But just as a reminder, the photo gallery tool is over here under images. We're using this tool right here called photo gallery. Again, you draw a box, you double click on it to configure it. But I've got one that's already made. So let me paste it on the page here. Okay, it's not inside the grid yet. I just want you to see the photo gallery itself. And I'm going to double click on it so you can see how I configured this particular object. Double clicking. I've already put about six images in here. That's done by clicking the add button, grabbing images from your desktop or your computer and putting them in the gallery. The options that are important here is I chose uh, it to be responsive when it shows the thumbnail sizes. I want a center alignment and a vertical alignment to be top. Also, I'm choosing to use the light box gallery as far as the behavior goes. There's a lot of different ways that a photo gallery can behave. Light box happens to be my favorite, so I chose that one, and it'll work good for what we're doing here. And then among the light box galleries, there's about five different kinds of those, and I'm just going to use this one. You can make your photo gallery do so many different things. We would spend too much time looking at all the options. And like I say, there are photo gallery videos. But I just want you to see that when we do make one, it's possible to put it into your website into a layout grid. The style settings are a little more complex for photo galleries than they are for other things because you have a lot of options, a lot of things going on here. We're going to leave this as it is and click OK. So here's my photo gallery with my, I said six, but I should have said eight images, eight photos. And all I do is I drag it into my layout grid and it snaps into place just like anything else would. So I've got three objects here, my text objects, and my photo gallery. Now one thing I didn't do is I didn't add any padding and I usually like to do that just to keep the text away from the edge. Looks a little better to me. So I'm gonna just add that little bit of setting here. 25 pixels seems to be a good one. Both top and bottom. Click OK. There. Spreads it out a little bit better. And now let's add one more thing just to make kind of a footer. We're gonna grab another layout grid. And again, to save time, I've already made one, and we don't need to be redundant because we've talked about this, pasting it in here. But I'll show you what I made. This is a four-column grid, as you can see, but they're not equal distances because they don't have to be. These just have to add up to 12, so I've got two of them that are four units wide and then two of them that are each two units wide. So it's possible to do that. Nothing really unusual about this, although I have a lot more padding than usual. I've got uh, 75 on the top and the bottom. Everything else is pretty much set the same. I added a color, that same blue we've been using for the theme of this website. And that's about it. A simple layout grid with four columns. Inside these columns, I mostly have text. That means here's a text object, here's a text object. Same thing here. These are just very simple to drag in, which like we've been doing. Take the object and drag it in and it snaps into place. Over here, I have used, once again, the card trick, just like we did up here. These cards that we used, I also used them down here, only they're a little bit different. Let's take a look at one. This is just a text object here, but this is one of my cards. We're going to double click on it and see how this was configured. Here we used an image in the card. 
as you can see right there. And let's see, let's double click on that or you can click edit to see what we did. We just went through and found an image that we want to use. And we did something a little bit tricky. We gave this image a radius border of 500. Whenever you give something a radius, that means you're rounding the corners. By default, something like this would show as a square or a rectangle. And you can curve the corners by adding little numbers here. So if this was a 2, this image would end up looking like this. It would end up looking like a little square with just sort of rounded corners. But when you exaggerate the radius like this and make it something like 500, it actually becomes a circle. Just kind of a fun little trick. So that's what we did. Click OK, and you can see it's now the shape of a circle. The other things in this card are a piece of text, another piece of text, and then I wanted some social media buttons to go under the person's name. So what I did was I added buttons. Remember, you can add buttons in this particular button. We called Facebook and found an icon. By clicking on the icon button, we find our Facebook icon, which is listed down here. It's that easy. I just want you to see that using cards is a good idea with layout grids because they're very, very versatile and they respond really well. So let's just click OK. And we pretty much have ourselves a website, or at least a web page. And just to reiterate, remember in the last video we made this little sticky layer and little font awesome icon that gives us our smooth scroll. So when we click on it, it scrolls us back up to the top of the page. You may be wondering why this layer doesn't have to live inside the page viewport. Normally we design everything inside the edge of the ruler. You wouldn't want objects outside. So why does this get to be outside? Well, the reason is because this is a sticky layer and its position is determined by its settings. It doesn't matter where we put this. We could put this completely out of sight as long as it's on the canvas somewhere. The reason is where it lands is determined by this setting here. It's always going to be stuck, since it's a sticky layer, to the bottom right corner of the screen and offset by 11. No matter where the browser is, how wide, how long, or how small the browser is, that is always going to be situated. That's what sticky layers do. That's why it doesn't have to be inside. So just a little side note in case you were wondering. And that's pretty much our website. Well, let's take a look. We're going to F5 and see what our final product looks like. Let's get it in the camera and bring up the bottom edge here. There we go. So we can see our little sticky layer. So here's our website. Let's uh, refresh it. We have our JavaScript text trick happening up here in the header. We have a full image that looks good. So we get the uh, images laid out in such a way that the, the text shows kind of on the ceiling of this image of this photo. We can scroll down, go to our next section, which is just a simple layout grid. Here's a four column layout grid. We've got some font awesome icons that have a little hover to them. We get down to another one with our special semi-transparent background that we use with this particular graphic. And then here are our cards in our two column grids. And then down to our photo gallery. We didn't try the photo gallery out. Let's check it out. All we have to do is click on a picture and there it comes up, pops up and we can click through these. This particular light box works like this. We can click through the images or we can close them. We can click on any one we want. It picks up from there. And of course, there's other effects that you can add to your photo gallery. But it's just good to know that you can use photo galleries just like anything else inside a layout grid. Let's try the sticky layer one more time just because it's so much fun. All right. So there you have it. Again, this is a template that's inside the members area that you can use. If you've been watching all three of these videos, having this template to work with may help you. There'll be a couple of other things in the template I didn't cover in the video just for the sake of time. So little bonus surprises you might want to find in there and see how they do what they do. But this has been a good primer for how to build websites with layout grids. It's a great tool to use. It's a much faster way to build a responsive or mobile friendly website with 90 Second Website Builder.